Welcome back to Yahtzee Tries, where the first thing we tried this week was Parcel Core, a game about riding a bike in such a way as to get things to places other than where they currently are, which sometimes means delivering packages to their recipients and sometimes means snapping your dislocated clavicle back into line after colliding head-on with a double-decker bus. Okay, I'm riding a bike. Those legs are horrifying. It was like I got little <laughs> scrotums on the backs of my calves. I'm uh, I'm currently chatting to the devs on Twitter this game. Um, bias, and bias. It's not Ethics bias. Ethics in games journalism. Ethics oh in games my God. journalism. Quick, make a make a two-hour video on it. Parcel Core is a bomb rush cyberpunk e Tony Hawkey kind of affair, focusing mainly on the traversal mechanics involved in riding your bike around a playground of roads, hills, ramps, and grind rails, and it's generally good at creating a challenging movement system where cracking off a decent combo of tricks and transitions feels gratifying because it's also very easy to wipe out and sand your face off with a concrete step. Why has everyone got monstrous legs in this game? Because they're cyclists, they've got those absolute stonking legs. What? I did it right. I only knocked over like nine cones. Oh, the stank on that, dude. I only rode on the pavement for a little bit. It wasn't like there was an old lady there. But in being slightly more fiddly than something like Bomb Rush and slightly more easygoing than something like Skate 2, it occupies a fairly unhappy middle ground where it's not as flowy and satisfying as the former and not as nuanced and realistic as the latter. Who are you? Why are you telling me these things? God, I wish I had an app on my phone that reminded me on how to, like, live. I've never quite figured out how I'm supposed to brush teeth. I keep sticking the brush in my ear. Yeah, I mean, if you go deep enough, I'm sure you could reach your teeth. It's oh, you all said connected. we were done! Stop tutorialising wheelies game, you said you were done. Still, I might feel differently if I got more time to get to grips with it. What won't change is that the character art is kind of grotesque. All the lumpy faces with the cel-shaded black lines tracing their scrotum-like musculature is like watching a fucking Terry Gilliam puppet show. Uh, one star because she had very chunky legs. Ooh, way! I've forgotten the entire tutorial. Wee! Oh fuck! Fuck you! Ow! Oh. oh well, that's it for that bike. But what really lets Parcel Core down for me is that it just won't fucking shut up. It keeps slamming on the brakes and forcing me to listen to prolonged dialogue from people who were being a written by someone who really wanted to show off their hilarious writing chops and didn't have a fucking editor, and b voiced by someone who had no idea how to deliver the line with the necessary energy. And the end result is that a game that's supposed to be wacky and energetic just doesn't crackle the way you'd want. Oh look, it's a oh. b-buck. Oh bugger, they're bitcoin users. It's that kind of game. Way that didn't work very well. Yay! Ow! Oh. <laughs> Who put that bus there? That was irresponsible. <laughs> you deserved to be hurt. No reverse key, I think it. You also deserved to be hurt. After being forced through a prolonged load of tutorials, I still had to listen to a mission provider drivel on for way too long and then continue driveling on about the fact that they're driveling on too long before I could finally have a crack at actually delivering something. I ain't competing for anyone online. I'm a free spirit. I'm a lone wolf. I'm playing on offline mode for a start. Yes, yes, you're, I'm sure your writer is very proud of his hilarious dialogue. Can I do the mission now? Wow! Whoa! Whee. Yeah! I have assurance from the developers that there's less talking when you get further into the game. So take that on board. Me, I need to move on. I've got another 50 fucking games to review. UFO 50 games, that is. UFO 50 is a compilation of 50 retro NES style games devised by the Spelunky developer that feels like a massive flex. Oh, working hard on your pixel art retro style games, are you indie developers? Don't mind me, just gonna drop 50 of the fucking things that I brushed out of my armpit hair this morning. I guess this is why we haven't seen any new Spelunky games in a while. Okay, what what are you playing as? Like a drumstick with legs? Okay, maybe that was a bad place to start. Maybe Jack was having a on. Oh no, Jay's mum was kidnapped by zombies. You never told me that. Oh my god. Well, yeah, she's campaigning well, for mayor. She can handle herself. A, B, D, always be dive kicking. Ow, oh, I'm dead. What a bastard. It's bloody impressive, and certainly nostalgic for someone like me, who had a Commodore 64 as a kid, and fondly remembers playing through vast compilations of games copied onto the same tape by school friends, vainly fishing for the two or three actually decent ones in the bunch. What? There's cars. Yeah, oh yeah. I suck at this game. Didn't we all? What hey, the fuck? Hey, the town survived. Fuck yes. Man, I've lost track of what I'm doing. 
You're exploding the dudes. I'm gonna kill the dudes. Obviously reviewing the whole thing is gonna be impossible in this format. I only had time to play like 10 games. Some of them were damp squirts, but from what I saw, it seems every game manages to find some interesting unique core gameplay concept to explore. Oh my god, there's so much... So many pieces on the screen, what the fuck? Oh, Jesus. Oh. And I'm confident in saying that you'll find a few things you like, whatever genres of gameplay tickle your particular perineum. My recommendations include that one with the train heist, where you have to plan a stealthy route through the lawmen with a suite of immersive sim-worthy abilities, and Mortal, where you create a way forward with your previous lives, like an asynchronous version of Lemmings. Well, that goes without saying. Alright, let's heist this fucking train. Fucking shoot the shit out of him, mate. Oh, nicely done onto blue. Hey, master thief, master thief. Ow, peg it! All the blowy, Oy. Yay. Why didn't he get one star? Piss off, game. For me, it really illustrates how astonishingly creatively bankrupt modern AAA game design has become. In the 8-bit era, developers were working with 100 pixels and like 10 colours and maybe 3 objects moving at the same time and created a veritable buffet of gameplay variety, as does UFO 50 by channeling the same attitude. Oh my god, it's Soccer Kid. It literally is Soccer Kid. Maybe that's how they devised these games, they just had a big dartboard covered in games and they just threw two darts and this one fell on Bubble Bobble and Soccer Kid. They're bored now. Meanwhile, AAA graphics these days can realise literally any creative vision and all they do is churn out the same shit. I guess you need to be able to see the boundaries before you can start pushing them, otherwise everyone just groups together in one spot like penguins huddled against the cold. If you've lost the thread of this metaphor, basically I'm saying that Ubisoft is a frightened penguin. Our next game is Europa, which we eventually settled on describing as Journey meets Shadow of the Colossus meets Drusand meets Breath of the Wild meets Planet of Lana, meets a pianist on antidepressants. Hey, your eye's all nice. weird. you got a portal logo for an eye. Literally, he's, got the, he's got the portal. Is it going to turn out there's no island and they're just going to harvest my organs to sell to rich people? Frodo Baggins begins the journey up Mount Doom. You are a little adorable puppet boy, oops, guess we'll throw lies of P in there as well, who has to journey through picturesque, if repetitive, colourful landscapes to the island in the sky where his dad lives or something, making use of his teal hover pack and the various mystical refueling stations that float around the place, solving puzzles to proceed that mostly involve touching three things and making them glow teal. Whee! <laughs> Oh, that's kind of fun. All right, so far we have moved, we have pressed up on the analog stick and occasionally jumped. I couldn't be bothered animating those animals, they just sort of vibrate into the ground. <laughs> just shimmy into the ground. The Zen experience is something that indie games tend to lean into these days, and I worry that some of them use the chill out label as an excuse for not having to put the design work in. So I go in asking where's all the challenge and monsters and exciting plot twists and the game's all like, hey, don't sweat it man, we're not here to judge you, just live in the moment and vibe. You're not gonna judge me, why the fuck else would I be playing video games? Well, I gotta say, this I is like bugging my uh... Dark Souls infected brain because now I feel like I haven't explored everywhere sufficiently. Oh. I'm gonna have to go back through the landscape and comb it <laughs> with a fine tooth comb. I can fly slowly. I mean, it's hard to navigate just because everywhere I look, there's a it's a green hill and a brown castle. All right, weak argument. Not well, everything has to be fucking demon souls. But the thing is, a chill out zen experience has to have some solid core gameplay infrastructure to work. Making a movement system that feels satisfying and flowy and natural is actually pretty hard. And it's exactly what Europa doesn't have. But you found the corruption. What does purple mean? Oh no, purple bad. It took your juice. Hey, M you mean purple thing. I don't want to sketch. I'm busy juicing. I'm pretty- I'm d I got a juice. Uh, I achieved something, I guess. You did. Congrats. The next level. Whee! As Marty pointed out, the moment you run out of juice for your hover pack, you're left scuttling around on floor level, wrestling with a bad case of excessive physics that makes it feel like you've got two partly empty helium balloons for feet. And even when you are hovering, it feels like you don't move horizontally fast enough and mid-air control is lacking. The colours are so vibrant they get plastered onto my retinas and everything looks purple for the rest of the day. Don't fucking shoot me. I'm an innocent little hobbit. Fucking... I have sore on fucking motherfucker. <laughs> Wee. The the robot looks like it's in a like in a hot tub, just like lounging. Yeah, yeah. 
Like one of those on. monkeys that hang out in hot springs. Yeah, exactly. That crystal was actually its penis, and you just took the robot's penis. <laughs> <laughs> Eat that. <laughs> hey, I was trying to have a soapy wank. Can't say I recommend it then. This might just be a me thing, but it bothers me when a character has the ability to glide when they have no visible means of doing so. Like wings, or a hover skirt, or whatever. Gliding in this game makes our dude looks like he has the ability to fart out of his kneecaps. And our last game is Pinball Spire. The pinball adventure game isn't the most well-served genre. It's basically just Yoku's Island Express, and now this. Alright, here we go. We're a pinball with eyes getting very fucking dizzy, no doubt. Uh, okay, whatever we did, it was the right thing to do. Oh, maybe oh. switches? Blah, 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 blah. How nice to see you again, bottom room. Well, see you in a couple <laughs> of minutes. But where Yoku very much had the emphasis on the adventure part, with the nice fantasy world and plot and all of that shit, Pinball Spire is definitely aiming at the other half of the Venn diagram. Yep, just dropping in again. Forgot something. Okay, <laughs> back now. I do feel oh. like, uh, oh, 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 just, just a taste, just, <laughs> just a, a little taste. sampler. <laughs> it looked like you were in space for a little bit. Whee! Yeah. In brief, I think you actually have to be someone who likes pinball to get the most out of this one. Full disclosure, I am not one of those people. I've never gotten the appeal of pinball. I guess I prefer my quarter munchers to at least pretend to give me a fighting chance. And I could theoretically succeed on skill alone, but no matter how skillfully you time your hitting of the flippers, sooner or later the ball's just gonna come right down the middle of the table and there isn't a flippin' thing you can do about it. Out of the way. I got pinball in to do. Ah, uh, sunglasses. You should have said there'd be accessories. Yeah. Ah. Wait, oh, no. don't send me through oh, the no. castle again. Oh no. You bastard. No. Settled in, kid. No. <laughs> How can they do this? And back again. Yep, I thought I was done with the catacombs, games, but apparently not. Having said that, Pinball Spire is basically 19 pinball tables glued together, so in its case what happens when you fall down the middle is you just have to go back to the last table. Which is something, I guess. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Oh, hey. oh, oh no, go back. go back, go back! Oh, you're so close! I was enjoying that! <laughs> oh no, it's so, so slow! No, 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 no. 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 Oh. no. Yes, yes, there we go. I did like the way early on the game unlocks a slow-mo power that also brings up guidelines indicating where the flipper's going to send the ball. Yes, that's exactly the kind of accommodation someone like me needs to get into a pinball experience, but the energy from that strong start couldn't be sustained as I struggled my way from table to table. Was this what was going on inside the brain of the pinball wizard of the famous song Pinball Wizard? <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, no, 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 oh, bollocks. I just remembered I don't like pinball very much. I don't know what additional powers unlock as you go through the game, but I'm really hoping for something that lets you control the trajectory of the ball in moments other than when you're flipping it, like little afterburners so you can course correct. But hell, don't listen to me if any of that will get in the way of the purity of the experience. Pow. Boo. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? You focus on your pinball-liking audience. I understand not everything has to cater to me. I'm also not about to complain that Crusader Kings 3 doesn't have enough car chases. Well, this is fucking embarrassing. I'm a tiny girl. I haven't got cycling shoes, I've got cycling shorts. They make me look very sexy. Well, if you quit your job, how are you going to pay for all the Super Chats and Patreon subscriptions that help Second Wind keep going? It's a pun on Ikea is the thing. I see, I, I picked up on that reference. I don't know if anyone else has the same intellectual level as me. Thanks, Sega. Being Sonic. Thanks for not being Sony. What was that game we, that was like Limbo, but... Planet of Lana? <laughs> How did you possibly guess that from that horrible description? <laughs> do pull-ups in front of your hot teacher wearing a maid outfit. No one says it like that. They do in France. They no, say they Gay don't. Paris. Gay Paris. Lingerie. Oh my god, he's only a wolf. Oh, well, you're, now you're gargling salt water to get rid of his sore throat. 